In recent days, the field of spaceflight has brought us a variety of events, some of which were uplifting while others less so, but such is the nature of space endeavors. In today's episode, we'll start by discussing the unsuccessful launch of the Rocket Lab's Electron Rocket. The second topic will focus on SpaceX's Falcon 9 launch, which pushed the boundaries of first stage reusability once again. In the third topic, we'll show how tests are conducted that will lead to improved solid rocket boosters for the SLS rocket in the coming years. On September 19th at 6.55 Universal Time, Rocket Lab's Electron rocket took off from the Mahia spaceport in New Zealand as part of the We Will Never Desert You mission. Electron was tasked with carrying the approximately 160 kilogram Acadia 2 satellite into orbit. The payload was intended to reach an orbit at an altitude of 635 kilometers, inclined by 53 degrees to the equator. The Acadia 2 satellite, owned by Capella Space, is part of a network of radar satellites. These satellites can capture images of Earth's surface day and night, regardless of weather conditions, making radar imagery valuable across various fields. However, Acadia 2 didn't make it to orbit. The milestone 40th launch of the Electron rocket ended in failure. The first stage of the Electron performed flawlessly, and footage from onboard cameras showed a smooth separation between the first and second stage. The problem occurred when the second stage's engine failed to ignite. Consequently, the vehicle didn't achieve the necessary velocity for orbit, resulting in a mission failure. This marked the fourth failure for the Electron rocket. The most recent Electron rocket failure occurred during its 20th launch in May 2021, when the second stage shut down prematurely. The failure in July 2020 was also attributed to the second stage of the Electron rocket. Until the investigation into the incident is concluded, all further Electron rocket launches are suspended to prevent a recurrence. The duration of the investigation remains uncertain, but past Electron rocket accident investigations have taken at least two months. On September 20th at 3.38 Universal Time, nine Merlin rocket engines ignited at launch pad SLC-40 on Florida's Space Coast as another Falcon 9 rocket embarked on its journey to the sky. The payload for the Starlink 6-17 mission consisted of 22 Starlink 2.0 mini satellites. These satellites are designed to provide high-speed internet access worldwide from an orbit at an altitude of 530 kilometers. While this launch might appear routine, it was far from it. This mission pushed the boundaries of reusability once more. The Falcon 9's first stage used for this mission had completed 16 flights, marking its 17th flight, a new record. The first stage, bearing serial number B1058, has launched a total of 823 satellites and two astronauts. It is the oldest first stage still in use by SpaceX, having made its debut in May 2020 when it carried out a crewed test flight for the Crew Dragon spacecraft. 
It has also launched the Anasys-2 communications satellite and the cargo spacecraft as part of the CRS-21 mission. However, most of its flights have been dedicated to deploying Starlink satellites, with 12 of its 17 missions carrying Starlink payloads. During its 17th flight, this record-breaking Falcon 9 first stage performed flawlessly and successfully landed on the A Shortfall of Gravitas drone ship. It is now gearing up for its 18th mission. During the launch of the SLS rocket, a pair of solid rocket boosters provide 75% of the thrust. These white slender cylinders measure 54 meters in height and have a diameter of 3.6 meters. They are an extended version of the solid rocket boosters used by the Space Shuttle. Starting with the Artemis 9 mission, NASA intends to transition to the final SLS configuration, known as Block 2. However, this will require improved solid rocket boosters. Their full deployment is still several years away, but work is already underway as part of the Booster Obsolescence and Life Extension Program, or shortly BOL. The footage captured on September 14th at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, shows a static fire test of a scaled-down, improved, solid rocket booster. Despite its reduced size, this booster generated a thrust of 37 metric tons. This was the third test in a long series in which NASA and Northrop Grumman experts evaluated the possibilities of using alternative materials in the nozzle and thermal insulation. This test followed trials conducted at the Marshall Space Flight Center in 2021 and 2022. Engineers primarily monitored the durability of the new materials against abrasion. The collected data will be compared with results from previous years. Gradually, this will enable the identification of the best materials for the final configuration of the SLS rocket. Thank you for watching our show. If you don't want to miss any future episodes, please subscribe. The next episode will be released on Sunday, September 24th, and it will be out a few hours later than usual. The reason for this delay is that we plan to include the landing of the OSIRIS-REx spacecraft's return capsule, which will be the main topic of the entire episode.